نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل اقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر و من احلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم انی اسألکا علما نافیا رزقا طیبا و عملا متتبلا اللہم الہمنا رشدا و عیزنا من شرور انفسنا اللہم ارنا الحق حقا و رزقنا اتباعا اللہم ارنا الباطل باطلا و رزقنا اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ Now talking about the conditions which are uh, which have to be fulfilled and which have to be met before uh, nikah is done are I will be talking about them now in detail the first requirement is the permission the willingness and the presence of the guardian of the bride who is called in sharia as the wali Hazrat Abu Musa radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in a hadith in Tirmizi that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said la nikaha illa bi wali that there will be no there will be no nikah in the absence of a guardian so according to this hadith the marriage or the nikah which is done without the permission without the willingness in the absence of the wali or the guardian of the girl like the court marriages of today they are not legal marriages and the wedding and the marriage is not considered legal and when the wedding or the nikah is not legalized in islam then obviously and very obviously the relationship after this form of or like after a court marriage will be considered as a zina or adultery as the aisha razi allah ta'ala and her reports in tirmizi that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that if a woman got her wedding performed without the permission of her guardian or the wali then what was said is that this wedding is invalid the wedding is invalid and the wedding is invalid so this is a very important requirement which has to be fulfilled and uh, similarly uh, another hadith uh, reported by abdullah bin abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu is that the prophet sallallahu says without the permission of the guardian or the ruler wedding is not solemnized so the wedding is not acceptable in the lights of islam and in the teachings of islam the second uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the uh, guardian the right but the, asks the guardian to take the permission of the girl as well so the second condition which has to be fulfilled is the willingness and the acceptance of the bride and the bridegroom both and uh, as far as the concept of willingness is concerned hazrat abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he narrates a hadith in ibn maja that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that uh, there is um, there should be allowance for the permission of the wife the hadith reports that a widow should not be married without being asked about it and the virgin girl must not be married without seeking her consent the companions asked that what what is the virgin girl's consent the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that if she remains silent and does not refuse then this is her consent similarly in other hadith reported by hazrat abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu in abu daud the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says virgin girl shall be asked for her marriage and she if she is silent in response then this shall be considered as her consent and if she refuses then she must not be compelled for consent so if any woman or girl is forced and under compulsion made to uh, to be wedded then if she wants she is entitled to get her marriage annulled from the court and this is a concept of sharia 
and as far as getting the willingness and acceptance of the bride and the bridegroom sharia definitely gives them the permission of having well willingness as we just uh, went through the words of surah uh, surah nisa ma tawaba lakum that which the women or the girls who appeal them and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also asked in uh, there there were more than one occasions when he, he used to ask his companions to see the woman he was uh, intending to get married to as a jabir bin abdullah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in abu daud that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when one of you intends to marry a woman he should if possible have a glimpse of the woman similarly hazrat abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in muslim that a person came and he asked and he uh, was uh, taking the advice of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and told him that he was going to get married to an ansari woman then um, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him have you seen her he said no that i have not seen that ansari woman so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said go go and see her because ansar women they have some defect in their eyes and uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that seeing the woman before the nikah is better for your mutual understanding and bond of love so this is like the second prerequisite that the willingness and the acceptance of the bride and bridegroom be taken and then uh, after uh, this the third uh, thing uh, which is uh, mandatory and which is a uh, prerequisite is the presence of the witnesses and uh, the fourth thing is uh, the holding of walima the walima is a sunna of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, it is the advice of the hadith itself as atanas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in a hadith from uh, muslim and bukhari that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam um, uh, uh, a companion hazrat abdul rahman bin auf radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he came over and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam noticed a yellow spot on his garment and he asked what is this so uh, hazrat abdul rahman bin auf said that i've got married to a woman and i've given her uh, he told a little amount of gold the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said may allah bless you with bounty now host walima dinner through a uh, meat of a goat only matl uh, it is like a lot of uh, food or something very heavy or very extensive form of walima or a dinner is not needed but at least some simple form of thing should be done if uh, the person at the the groom cannot afford too much but remember the purpose of this walima is to share the joy and the blessings of uh, the marriage with the relatives and with the fellow beings and with the friends and secondly the actual purpose is to announce the marriage because there is uh, no concept of hidden or secret marriages in the sharia and then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has also asked the muslims that if somebody in, uh, invites you to the dinner of his wedding then he should it is a right of a muslim on the muslim that he should accept it and uh, then after this is uh, there is a sermon of the nikah it was a, uh, it was a sermon which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught us to be recited at the time of nikah and uh, last but not the least is the bride gift which is uh, in sharia it is in quran it has been called as mahar this is obligatory giving the mahar or the bride's gift is obligatory as uh, we went through the ayah number 4 of uh, surah an-nisa where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly said fatuhunna jurahunna faridah so it is a farida din and it is obligatory for the muslim husband and it is the duty of the muslim husband and it is the right of the muslim wife similarly allah subhanahu wa taala in uh, ayat number uh, sorry the previous ayat which i said is ayat number 24 and in ayat number 4 of surah an-nisa allah subhanahu wa taala says wa atu an-nisa sadaqati hinna nikla that uh, give them out of will and happily give them their um, all the all the dowered money so this is now a persistent sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh has taught us that uh, it has to be given as an obligatory duty 
And uh, there is a hadith which uh, clearly highlights that if a person does not want to pay off his wife this dower uh, or the bri bridal gift, then the Prophet ﷺ says that one who fixes or agrees to a bride's gift for which he has no intentions of paying, then he'll be, he will be presented to Allah on the day of judgment as an adulterer. So the Prophet ﷺ himself paid this bride gift to all the wives and uh, as reported by Hazrat Abi Salma bin Abdul Rahman in a hadith of uh, Muslim, uh, he said that the mothers of the faithful uh, Prophet ﷺ paid them a bride's gift of 12 and a half okia and uh, which was equal to almost 500 dirham. So we need to realize that uh, this is not the fixed amount that has to be given. We just want to, uh, I would want to repeat that this amount of bride's gift or the Tao was given by the Prophet ﷺ in the economic conditions which was prevailing in the house of the Prophet ﷺ. To have an idea, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and who reports and narrates in a hadith in Bukhari, he, she was addressing her nephew and she was telling her that, oh nephew, in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, one moon used to come and the second moon used to come and the third moon used to come and the, the fire never used to burn in the houses of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the nephew was so, so upset and he was so shocked he asked that what did you eat as Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and has said that we used to take water and we used to take the dates other than few situations when the neighbors used to send us the milk of the goats and that you you can feel that used to be like a, a lovely treat for the house of the Prophet ﷺ. So in this economic background, Prophet ﷺ was seen giving 500 or 12 and a half okia of silver to his wives. So this bride's gift has to be according to the economic affordability of the groom himself. And there's no concept of fixing it. And the purpose of basically uh, giving this bride's gift is to educate and to let their husband or to get him used to the concept from the day one that all the economic commitments are his and from the day one, he is being trained that fending, fetching, providing, feeding, clothing and providing for her economically is his duty. And from day one, he's been uh, trained to give gifts and to fulfill her requirements. And uh, it can be it can be anything. It uh, doesn't necessarily have to be in form of cash or currency or in form of gold or in form of jewelry. It can be anything like um, we uh, we can um, see that the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reported that the best the best bride's money that a companion of or a Sahabia took from her husband was Hazrat Umm Sulaim radiallahu ta'ala anha. Hazrat Umm Sulaim radiallahu ta'ala anha, she got widowed. And after she got widowed, uh, Hazrat Abu Talha radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports that I felt like I was uh, attracted to her because she was beautiful and she was wealthy and she was very, very sharp and well read. So she's, he says that I felt like getting married to her and he sent her proposal. But Hazrat Umay Sulaim radiallahu ta'ala and her said that I can't get married to you and I can't accept your proposal because you, you worship idols and I, I am, I am the worshiper of Allah, one. So she refused the proposal and uh, there and then because he was really very desirous of getting wed to her. So he said that he offered that if I embrace Islam, will then then, then will you accept my proposal? And she said that, OK, yes, if you give me your conversion to Islam, you give me as my bride's gift, I'll take it. I'll make it as my bride's gift and then I will accept your proposal. So he accepted Islam and they were they were uh, wed with each other. So this was like the best bride's gift which uh, Hazrat Umay Sulaim radiallahu ta'ala and her received from her husband. And then it can be anything. It can be anything as simple like uh, there's an incident narrated in uh, Bukhari that a woman came 
and uh, she offered herself to get married and she proposed to the Prophet Sallallahu since uh, there was no command of Allah to the Prophet Sallallahu to get married to the women Prophet Sallallahu refused and uh, there was a companion there uh, he he asked Muhammad Sallallahu that I don't have a wife and I need to get married so just uh, let us get married with each other. Prophet Sallallahu said that okay, go find. He was he was extremely pure, uh, poor, and Prophet Sallallahu said that okay, go to your house and try to look for something to give her as a bride's gift. He went to his house. He came back. He said, I don't have anything at my house. And then Prophet Sallallahu said, go go again and look look for something. You might have a ring of iron or bronze in your house and let that be her bride's gift. He came back and he said, the Prophet Sallallahu I don't even have a ring of iron in my house. And uh, Prophet Sallallahu then asked her, rather than if it had been certain things like this had been in days of today, anybody would have said, oh, you poor person, when you don't even have an iron ring, why do you want to go ahead and marry a woman? You won't be able to require fulfill her requirements why do you want to get married so the prophet said that okay fine do you uh do you uh, no, and you remember 10 ayahs of the 10 verses of the Quran? He said, yes. And uh, Prophet Sallallahu then asked that lady that if he teaches you these 10 ayah, would you let it be your bride's gift? And would you get want to get married to him? And she also accepted. And their bride's gift or dawah was what? These 10, the teaching and education of these 10 verses of the Quran. So it has to be given, but it can be anything. So these are the 10, uh, the uh, requirements which have to be fulfilled before the marriage has to be done and these are proven by Sharia. Fiamanillah, remember to share our uh, videos and remember to keep on inviting as many fellows and friends you can to make them understand the concept of uh, Quran and the teachings of Islam and help us spread the message of Islam as far as you can. Fiamanillah.